Well, thank you so much, Tamika, for such a very warm introduction. Um, and as you know, Tamika serves on the board of directors for CUP, as you said, and she has also been working tirelessly to put this terrific event together. And I'd also like to thank Janita for coming out to support the event and Melissa, the wonderful executive director of CUP for giving us the opportunity to host the 13th annual Wall Street Partners Forum. And this, this event, it's a really important chance for us to discuss transformational trends in our industry, but more than that, to commit to action. And 2020 was certainly not the year we thought it would be. It has been a year of transformation, but it's also one of action. And the pandemic has created an unprecedented opportunity and need for us to reimagine how we do business in financial services, from how we look after our people, to the way we work, to how we best serve our clients, to how we support our communities when they are hurting and they have been hurting. So at City. We are making changes across our business, but also across our culture and really renewing our commitment to being part of building a fairer and more equitable world and putting the full force of the bank behind that. So last month, City announced a billion dollars plus of initiatives to help close the racial wealth gap, one of the most critical gaps to close, and to increase economic mobility in the US. But we also are providing support in training and education and efforts that really will make um, these different initiatives enduring because this time it has to be different. I want to engage. I want to reach out to my Black colleagues, to my Black employees, but I don't know what to say. I don't want to say something that's wrong or that may insult them. Um, so a lot of dialogue there. And the great news there is, and this is, this is what I've shared and, and the panelists who, who uh, were on the panel with me is, it's about communicating, right? It's, mm -hmm. don't, you know, don't worry about having the exact right thing to say. It's about opening the dialogue. Then when, when I look at the minority community around City, uh, of course, City is a global organization. Um, and so I had a lot of outreach from folks in India and folks around the world. And similar sentiment. Uh, what I heard in addition from that community was many had a Pandora's box as well, right? And mm. it was the first time for them that they were actually felt comfortable communicating and pulling things out of their Pandora's box, right? Mm. And then the third community is our Black community. And what I'm hearing and continue to hear from, from our Black community is a feeling of connection a feeling of comfort, empowerment to have the discussion, right? Mm -hmm. It's about having that discussion. Now, we have a very difficult and challenging journey ahead of us, right? We have a lot, a lot more to do. But what I would say to you is this, I have been in the industry for over 30 plus years and I have worked for three other large money center banks. And during those 30 plus years, I have sat on many diversity committees, I've sat on many inclusion mm -hmm. uh, across, across the 30 plus years. But this is the first time, this is the first time that I honestly, honestly feel comfortable taking things out of my Pandora's box. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'm opening it slowly, guys. It's not, mm -hmm. I'm not just like all out there, but I feel it's necessary. I, I feel it's important that if we're going to have these discussions, and we're going to make a difference mm -hmm. that we have to, we have to be comfortable being uncomfortable, mm -hmm. right? If you will. Um, and why am I continuing to open my Pandora's box? Because I truly believe that Stuart Riley and Deb Waters and many on Stuart's management team are really driving this forward as an imperative for the business. So I hope in that, that brief synopsis, the audience here feels my sincere, my sincereness around this topic. It's very mm -hmm. near and dear to my heart, my passion for it. This is not a scripted message. This is how Sandra Peterson feels, shares, and believe we can make a difference. So thank you for that opportunity, Jane, to, uh, 
to uh, yeah. get a little passionate. <laughs> oh, I, I I remember so well listening to one of the on a on a Saturday morning at home listening to a replay of one of one of those panels that Stuart was leading, and um, yeah, it it was um, I I mean everyone was in tears. Um, but from that, you know, things change. Jane, as, as you're fully aware and on your calendar, you're hosting the Black MDs um, in a couple weeks' time, mm -hmm. which is the first time ever that we have had that cohort sit with um, our soon-to-be CEO. Um, and I think that's a great partnership that we have where we can talk openly about what things we're doing well, mm -hmm. what things we need to improve. Um, and I'll give credit one more before I turn it back to Bola. And I like Bola to, to add on to this because she's my partner on Black Leaders for Tomorrow and um, the, the Black uh, uh, employee network that we have. Uh, our two co-heads of banking, capital markets and advisory, for the first time this year before COVID, we asked them to host every black employee from BCMA. And we had almost 100 people in the room. And what we didn't expect was that our two co-heads said, we're going to bring our management team. That mm -hmm. management team sat in the room with us as we talked about what things we need to do better, what's the, the feedback we need to get. Because at times, mm -hmm. we all understand it and we've gone through it. We, we will have an employee get feedback that says, you're doing well, but your technical skills or challenge. What does that really mean? What's the feedback we need to get? And I think we're doing a better job of having our managers have the training that they need to have an open and broad conversation with us to make sure that feedback that we hear is concrete, it's direct, but it's also important that when we get it, we get something that we can work on. So I think all of those things with, with Mike and Mark's leadership and Jane uh, with your leadership, it's working because we've just hired a new chief accounting officer uh, that will work, work for Mark Mason, who's uh, uh, a, a black male. Jane, you hired somebody into the consumer bank yep. um, as well. Very senior level talent. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's easier to get it from entry level because everybody just wants to get a job. But when you make a conscious decision as a managing director to move a firm, that firm that you're going to is bringing something to the table. And I think mm -hmm. you and the, the leadership team, including Paco, are all creating an environment that people want to work at City. So we thank you for that. And, and mm -hmm. all the work that we're doing is really because of the leadership of the management team. Yeah. I think you're doing yourself a disservice. I think it's uh, the heart and soul of the people that we have in the bank. But uh, thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. Bola, did you want to add anything to that? Sorry about that. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, uh, Paul, I, 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 you know, just one more thing on that note. Yeah. Uh, we're doing at the Black Heritage uh, Affinity, uh, talking about first, for the first time ever, you know, I've been at City 20 years. We, about two months ago, we had a global Black women town hall at City. <laughs> where we talked about topics that were considered taboo until now. We talked about the stereotype of the angry black woman yeah. on Wall Street. We talked about a black woman's hair and mm -hmm. how it's important for everybody to present however they choose. And I want to thank you again, you know, talk, um, talking about what Paul said, Jane, yourself and our CFO, Mark Mason, I uh, want to thank you not just for sponsoring, because you could sponsor and not be there, but to have the most senior woman at the bank and the most senior black leader at the bank uh, participate, you know, give speeches as part of this, give a lot of credence. And we got an overwhelming response on that. So thank you, uh, Jane, Mark, you know, Mike and all the other leaders. We appreciate it really very much. You know, City's mission is to enable growth and progress. And I think we've seen an incredible demonstration of that really in action this year through the way we and so many other banks have stepped up to support our clients, our colleagues, and most importantly, our communities and our people. Um, and I'm very confident that through public and private partnerships and gatherings such as these this evenings, we can make meaningful progress towards a fairer and more equitable world. And I encourage everyone to do exactly what 
um, Sandra, you're talking about, which takes such courage and bravery of opening that Pandora's box um, and then uh, really helping helping make a real difference for so many other people. Your, your courage of all of you is just remarkable and wonderful. Mm -hmm. So thank you, everyone. Um, stay safe. Um, it's a, a, it's probably going to be a bit of a grueling winter. Um, stay healthy. Um, please do. Um, but continue making a difference. 